Hello everyone, it's Michelle Angelique, Truth and Integrity Warrior, with another episode, episode 5 of the Rise of a Species Mankind, and today I wanted to talk about something very important that I think should be spoken about before I go on with any more episodes, and that would be our understanding of what we understand is, is God, or what is the good in this world, and we follow people and we listen to people, but we don't really know what their core beliefs are, what their principles and values are, what they stand for. We believe that we do because of what we hear them say. So we have to take and make an assumption of what their beliefs may be. But when you actually listen to someone's prayer, you know who you're speaking to. You know where the weaknesses are. You know if they pray because they regurgitate or they pray because they make a stand and define in the field what it is that they want to project. And so that might sound a little confusing to some people, but once you hear um, how I pray, you can call it meditate or how I set my focus or my set the field for the day or set the tone for the day you'll be able to understand what I mean by this. Uh, a lot of us pray and we regurgitate, but we're not really aware of the contradiction in the words. And so today's episode is gonna be about understanding and defining the difference between gods, because we're hearing a lot about different gods and everybody has their God. And there's, there's something to that. And what the difference is between these gods and the Almighty, the Holy Infinite Almighty, because there is a definite defined difference between these understandings, and I want to make sure to define where I stand, and the people that listen to me know where I stand. So as the words come out of my mouth, episode after episode, you are not confused or misdirected by the intention of my words that I speak out. And the other part to this episode would be, i got to actually write these things down to make sure I stay on track, is breaking that religious matrix that has been put upon us. That religious matrix that has been going on for eons of time. And it's not that we stop believing in the core values and principles that we have. It's that we start recognizing how evil has hidden behind that. And that be religion. And so religion is serves a purpose which I understand and I respect but evil is not going to just be able to come out and say hey believe in me believe in evil because we would reject it so it has to hide behind something to be able to infiltrate the mind and then misdirect the soul so this is what this is going to be about is the best way I can I'm going to do it the best way I can to try to break this information down into a better panorama of the dynamics that are going on in our world today because it's very confusing for a lot of people who are coming up um uh, i guess you call them millennials and then we have the old school train of thought which is the old mind the old world where you can't get them out of the conception that god is a man sitting up in the sky and just judging the shit out of everybody and saying who's worthy and who's not. I'm not down with that. And so I want to try to uh, mold this the best way I can into a cohesive information for all of us to be able to digest and, and see it from a, a very neutral perspective. Neutral perspective meaning I'm not here to step on everyone's toes and make people upset about what their religion is is to see what's hiding behind the religion so that they can make a better what is the right word a better focus a better direction so they don't get misguided so i'm not asking anybody to stop believing in what they believe and let's just be able to clear some of this mess up that's in our world today that has to do with religion that's separating everyone from the almighty which is a core spark of life force 
that is in all things and we don't recognize it and if we don't recognize it we don't know what we're made up of and then we will have that feeling of I am not worthy that has been put into religion religion has created the let's keep everything separate from everything blame make feel guilt shame onto everyone that doesn't meet this higher standard well then everybody will always be in this lower standard never to achieve what religion has put up above everyone else so that mentality is the way you get everyone to corely believe even if they don't think it their subconscious believes it that they're not worthy or they're never going to be good enough and it comes out in their words and in our words are power our words project in the field so if our world is an electromagnetic field that is sensitive to vibration and sound and reacts and responds to it in that way then we need to know what we're saying what we're feeling and what we're projecting so before i go on any further on that i want to explain what i mean when i say i am one with the holy infinite almighty the holy infinite almighty i am is we are calling god a name and to put any God in a name would be limiting. And so if the Almighty is above all things, it cannot be limited within a name. But yet, religion, different religions have different names for different gods. And so what God are we actually talking about here? What gods are we talking about here? So it's actually a very long subject and topic but I'm going to try to narrow it down just on the principal understandings of what are we really saying when we say we believe in God or we don't believe in God. What are we talking about here? Do not believe that we are a part of something great and that we just happen to exist and out of nowhere. That is, that is something that somebody has to work on for themselves. Right? I don't even choose to work with that if that's where one wants to believe that nothing comes from nothing and everything is nothing and we just happen to be here and there is no shame in anyone's game they can do whatever they want that's their own prerogative and I, I choose not to go down that road it's pointless it's like talking to i get more communication out of a rock so we're just going to move that to the side this information will not be for those type of people for that mentality, for the way of thinking, I should say. Not about people, just that way of thinking. This way of thinking that I'm talking about is those who know that there's something good, but we got something bad mixed within it and we can't define the difference. And then also for people who don't want to believe in anything religious because they can see the contradiction, which is a lot of our millennials today. I'm not a millennial, but I can see the contradiction. I can see why the disbelief in the word God, but we gotta bring this back into, there is something going on between good and evil, and we have to know and define where we stand within that line. Because lines are being crossed, things are getting so evil, so hectic, that if there is evil, that got to be the opposite, and there is good. So unless you had personal experiences where you know that there is good out there because you also know that there is evil out there, then this may be hard, harder for you or for one, I should say, to understand that there is a difference. And when we get real scared in life is when things shock the shit out of us and then we start reevaluating how we're looking at life. And I say that for people who are not very sure about what I'm talking about. Well, we get certain experiences to make us recognize that I feel like I need to pray. <laughs> That's the best way I can say it. So, you know, some people are like, you know what? I didn't pray before, but I think I'm going to start praying because things start happening where we need to find that, that, that knowing, that lifeboat or that life raft to say, I can take a breath because it's shit so heavy out here. You know, I can take a breath. Let me take a moment. Let me rest my head. And that's where religion catches people who are broken and it gets them to submit to, I am not worthy, I am no good, I am 
those kind of words are not of one with the Almighty. If we are here to serve and to do unto others as we would do unto ourselves, but yet we find ourselves not worthy, then we are not worthy to help anyone else. And what service are we to one another? So to be, to have purpose and servitude towards one and the other, to be able to be here for one another, we have to have self-worth. So I want to bring that self-worth back from all religions. So no matter what religion you have, it's bringing back that self-worth, that self-dignity, that self-integrity. And bringing that integrity is bringing it back to the understanding that we are one with the Holy Infinite Almighty. Because the Holy Info, Infinite, excuse me, Holy Infinite Almighty is a force above and beyond all things. Nothing is above it. So for there to be gods above people, then there is something above those gods, and that is the Almighty, because nothing is created without that force of the Almighty. And so we can't see God as an individual, because that would be an individual above others, and that would not be the Holy Infinite Almighty. But we can see the Holy Infinite Almighty in the expression in our world in that which is good and either we express that good or we don't and things are happening to the point where we are being changed we are being modified our species mankind is being broken down to the point where his mind is working towards the negative and he will be the expression he and she will be the expression of this evil that's consuming this world and so for us to recognize that this is even happening we have to recognize we have a soul and the soul is first, and then it is in this physical form, in this body. So the body can stop working, but the mind continues to move. The mind continues to think and grow and be, because it is first and primary, then it goes into the body. And we haven't been taught those things, because if we are taught those things, then we would have power and control over our own lives, and we wouldn't follow this mindset, this ruling and managing and maneuvering our world. But if we think that we're not worthy and we're not capable, we're not able, we'll never be because we never were. And we're just being born. Just because we're born, we're already being told we're born of sin. Well, shit, how can I even get started if I'm already broken down before I'm even here? So that mentality is to break the minds of men and women, of mankind, so that we don't recognize the force and power that we are one with. And that's the Holy Infinite Almighty. And so I'm going to say what I, how I project my day. I don't want to scare people with prayer. People don't like prayer. It's very sad, but people don't like prayer. So I'm going to use another way to express that, and that would be how I set the field the tone from, from my mind into the field. And it's generated also from my heart. Meaning I feel what I say and I think. They're all one. And I wrote this, this prayer, this saying, this mantra, this meditation, whatever you want to call it, we're talking about the same thing. I wrote this because I was having an experience uh, with a lot of coincidences hitting my front door on a regular basis that I said, I think I better write a prayer because I got this prayer that keeps coming to me from different people. And so if this is happening, there's some attention I need to pay right here. And so I had a lot of people knocking on my door at different times uh, within a month span, bringing me the, the prayer that I used to say all the time as a kid. And I haven't heard that prayer since I was a kid. And this is what made it a coincidence. It's because it kept happening. It was happening to the point where it was not even at my door. It was, uh, and what I mean at my door, you know, when um, different churches or religions come and, and knock on the door and they want to share the word with you. Well, it's being shared the same word. And it was the regular prayer that a lot of Christians grow up with. I don't know if Catholics grow up with it. I, I wouldn't know what to tell you about that. I'll write it inside of the comments on the page below or on this uh, episode so you can see which prayer I'm talking about. But in there, I found a lot of contradictions. 
And I won't go over them because I don't want to offend people. I don't want to make people upset. I just saw that there were contradictions in this. And so in, in that, I said, well, I can't make a prayer. I might have done it when I was a kid because I didn't know any better. And we just followed lead, you know, from our parents and the adults around us. But as an adult, I was like, you know what? I do need a prayer. I do need to create a focus. And now that this is coming to my attention, I'm going to work not on making that prayer better, the traditional prayer better, but finding words to define what I have come to understand, what we are all a part of. And that's a holy, infinite, almighty. And so I call it the holy, infinite, almighty because we can't put it, we can't give it a name. You can't box it up within a person or a single being. You know, it can't be in an individual. It can't have a name because then that makes it an individual. There can't be no individual above me. And there can't be an individual above all because it's limiting to be an individual. It has a personality. It has an ego. So that is not a definition of something that is all and mighty and above all things. And so that's where I put the holy, infinite, almighty. Just so that there's an understanding of when I say the good of God, it is that, the holy, infinite, almighty. And so I say holy because it is whole, balanced, and complete. And when we reach that state of being whole, balanced, and complete, we are well. Plants grow well when they're whole, balanced, and complete. Our vibration within us, how we feel, is well when we're whole, balanced, and complete. So the Holy Infinite Almighty is that perfection of whole, balanced, and complete. And so I say infinite because it is a source that is never ending and eternal. Never ending and eternal. Never ends and is eternal. And it is the Almighty because it is incomprehensible to what we can understand, what we can fathom. It is all-encompassing of all things, and nothing is above it. And that's all in my and, and that is how I choose, or I chose to use those words in that order, to have a clear understanding and definition of when I say those words, that's what I mean. And so I'm just going to say my prayer, as I say, or my meditation, or a mantra, or it's another one, or setting the field or setting the tone for my day. I have a cousin that I cannot say prayer without her breaking down and getting annoyed or agitated, and that's very sad. So if I say, can I set the tone for the day? She says, yeah, I can handle that. So for those of you who can't handle the word prayer, let me show you how I set the tone for my day. That way you get to know who I am and make a choice to stand and hear the words that come out of my mouth or to choose not to anymore. It's very important to know who we're listening to and where they stand, especially in the moments and the time that we're living in today where good and evil is real and we have to define the line of where we stand. I am one with the Holy Infinite Almighty. With the Holy Infinite Almighty I am. And I take responsibility. The Holy Infinite Almighty is a force beyond and above all things, connecting all things, and is the force within all things. Nothing is above it. All is interconnected through the force and power of the Holy Infinite Almighty, through the Holy Spirit. Spirit that is whole, spirit that is balanced, spirit that is complete. Connecting all life with this force, charging our spark from within. That vibration, that feeling, that oneness we seek, is always within. I acknowledge that from my mind and through my thoughts, that from my heart and through my emotions, that from my actions and through the power of my words, I project and I cause an effect in this world. My world. 
in yours. I am one with the Holy Infinite Almighty. With the Holy Infinite Almighty I am. I am the force within. And I take responsibility, unafraid to stand alone, knowing that we stand together, Russia, as one. And so not knowing where we stand and not knowing that we are one with the Holy Infinite Almighty and that we project that force in this field, then what service are we to one another if we are not worthy? Depending on what we have done in our lives makes us feel this pain, this shame, and I want to help get it out. So we all have different pains and shames to different degrees, but we're all on the same degree line. And this is where we have to stop judging one another for the degree line that we are all on. So if we're all in the water, we can't be pointing and calling each other out because somebody's more wet than the other. We're all in this and we all got to get out of this because it is a mess. And so when we stop judging on the outside, and we start looking and judging ourselves from the inside, we then have no more judgment for anyone else because we understand the shit that they had to go through just to see themselves. And they are blind to themselves as we were blind to our own self. And then because we recognize that, and because we had to learn to forgive ourselves to no matter what degree line that we are on, meaning some of us, have just done some things that we need to find forgiveness for, for ourselves. And then some have to the point where they need redemption because it is so bad. But because we are all on this same line of degree, we cannot sit and judge because we waste time. And that time wasted is time not focused on those who are here to break us down. And when I say those who are here to break us down, it is not human and we have to come to recognize that something is working against the species of mankind. And either you understand what I'm saying or you don't. And if you don't and you choose to listen, then it's important to know how to listen. But if you are here to argue this, ask questions and I will be happy to answer we don't sit in ridicule because I will show you an expression of yourself. Because that's what we have to stop doing. We have to stop ridiculing. We have to stop putting the finger and breaking each other down. Because there's something within the species that must be broken down. And that's where our focus and our attention must go. To break down this matrix of religion within the mind means that if religion is telling me I am not worthy, then what am I here for? Why is it contradicting to what is good but yet telling me I'm not worthy? How can it damn and judge but yet be good at the same time? Well, that's traits of an individual, not of the Almighty. Because the Almighty is an expression, the essence of what we cannot see or fathom, but we can see the expression in its essence. And we know that essence is what helps us flourish and grow. And so when we have that essence and recognize that essence within us, then we use that essence to make things around us grow. And we make a better world because of it. And that's what we have to do. We gotta make this a better world in the space that we're in. Because if we don't, if we keep breaking ourselves down, if we keep hating ourselves, and not recognizing that our selves need forgiveness, then we will never be able to forgive and see on the outside, and we will continue to fight and destroy one another. Because in the end, that's what this mind virus wants, it wants us to continue to break one another down, to not be able to see the fine line of what's really going on. So when we start to become aware of our words and the contradiction of our words, we start becoming aware of the mess that we got inside that needs attention. And if somebody is kind enough to see your contradiction and to let you know, 
that person's a good friend. Because it's very hard to do that, to show somebody and say, hey, you know what? I've made an observation. This is what I've seen. I'm not here to criticize you. I'm not here to tell you you're a piece of shit. But I am going to tell you that what you're doing is hurting the people around you. And so you might need to look inside yourself so you can make that adjustment. Tune in to yourself because the outwardly expression of your disbalance within, within yourself and your own emotion is hurting those around you that you love. And so once we can take care of that, we can hone in on that in our home environment, then that starts spreading into our neighborhoods, into our cities, yeah, into the states, into the country, into the world. And that's the only way it can work, it's like a little pixel. And everybody's fine-tuning their little pixels. And we're going to fine-tune these little pixels until we get a big picture of what's happening. And we start tuning in and we start balancing within ourselves. Because if we're in religion and religions are telling us things that are a contradiction in the words when they're spoken, but we can't hear them because we've been hearing them for so long that they make sense. They make sense because we've heard them for so long. Just like a woman or someone who's in an abusive relationship, that's all they've known. So they don't know that there's something outside of that. It only makes sense. Why does it make sense? Because it's always been. Because they've never been on some other side. And that other side, has, they can't visualize it. They can't see it. So they can't reach it and they can't attain it. And it's really hard to get to something you can't see. And I speak about it, that from experience. Because I was one of those people. And not to get off track, I want to go back to the matrix of religion in the mind. I'm not telling you don't believe. I'm telling you, listen to the contradiction in that belief. Fine tune it and start making a definition for yourself where you stand. Because we're going to start following this religion as a whole in a world. They're trying to get us on a one world religious system that makes everybody a super god. That makes everybody the god as an individual. And there's truth and a lie in there. And that's how lies get in when they sprinkle it with truth. Or I should say it's sprinkled with a lie it within deep truths. And so I'm going to start calling out, like I said in other episodes, Today I'm going to call out one. I'm going to call out one. So you can see what I'm talking about. And I will do a full episode. I'm just going to be just calling them all out. Calling all these truthers and gurus out. To step up one-on-one -on -one anytime they want. So they can clarify their contradictions. So this, what I see coming is this movement towards this we are all gods, right? And if we're all gods, then we have the choice and power to do this and to do that. And we have the tech coming, telling us that we're also going to be superior because we'll be able to do this and do that through this technology that they want to get into the body. So this causes for the end of a soul, the entrapment of a soul. So we have to be very careful about what we're listening to and the carrot on the stick. Because if people keep following this carrot on the stick, we're going to fall into the same shit show on a different stage. But the only problem is, it's going to, well, I shouldn't say problem. What defines the difference here is the soul. The level that what's going to happen to the soul between this tech and the superiority. Because they're taking us into, you are superior, you are gods, instead of recognizing that we are one with the Almighty. We are one. There is no separation. There is no almighty over there and me individual over here. It's a oneness and I must project that oneness here. And I must find that balance within here and find a way to get there so I can balance everything that's out here. And so Greg Braden is a big guru. He wouldn't call himself a guru, but people follow him like a guru. And I used to listen to him long ago when, back in the day, when he started. And he was a different man then than he is today. 
And where I recognize through his words where he's leading people is to the name of a God from ancient times. Lost in history, but he's bringing it back. And with that name, everybody has this oneness with them. Well, going back to what I was saying, that there are these multiple gods out there, and they are actual beings who want superiority over human beings and want their worship. We must be very careful on this road that we lead. What steps we take to follow individuals. And so Greg Braden speaks a whole lot of truth. In fact, I would say 99.9% .9 of the truth because he just brings out these extraordinary facts and he has the science to back up what he says. And so I'm with a lot of what he says, but I caught, I caught him in his words. And I knew to catch and start looking at his words because I recognized that his clothes had changed. He went in from wearing regular clothes with regular colors and, and different attire to always wearing black. Another one is G D Pop Chopra, always wearing black. And so anybody who always wears black and does never changes it up, doesn't have a little pop of color here, a little pop of color there, is something to be questioned. It's something to be questioned. And so I question it. You might not question it, but I question it. But like, how do you go from wearing regular attire, changing it up, you know, every day, to always wearing black from head to toe, and then seeing two, uh, two speakers taking people on the same trip to the same road from different directions? And I will get more into it the day I call them out. I'll do a call out one episode per guru, per truther. And it's not to say that there's something wrong with this individual, he's a bad individual, but this is a misguided individual who's misguiding others with a little sprinkle of a lie with a whole lot of truth. And so it's really hard to catch these guys, really hard to catch these guys. The great Braden part, I will get back to that on another episode. I'll just leave that as like a little trailer to let you know that I do have his words. And for him to come and explain them, to clear up the water, why I always wear black from head to toe every day for years on end, is because it shows a loyalty to a system. And a lot of people don't know that. But that's showing loyalty to a system. So no matter what words are beautiful coming out here, he's still part of a system somewhere else. And that's why I say it's important to know how does one pray? What does one believe in? What are the words that comes out of one's mouth that they defined is truth? Because when you ask these people who are their God or what God do they believe in, does their God have a name? Then you start seeing who you're talking to, who you're talking with, because they cannot reject their God. As I do not reject the Holy Infinite Almighty. That I am one with from the inside out. Because if we don't stand for good and we don't start showing the good that is within us for those around us, everything's going to start crumbling down faster than it already is in our world. Because this is a game of vibration, this is a game of frequency. This is a game of what is projected from the mind. When I say mind, I mean the soul. The mind is the soul. The brain is a processor. The mind is the soul and the mind works without the body. And so when I'm talking about, when I say the mind, I'm speaking about the soul. And so it is very important for us to know that we are an instrument. We are a soul that projects a vibration that makes a change and it causes an effect in this reality. It's gonna take a whole lot of visuals. Some of you might just get it just like that. Be like, bam, I feel it inside, be like, I knew it. I just needed to hear it. 
and some of me will be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. How can you prove that there is a soul? How can anyone know that they have a soul? And I can only say that that only will come with a personal experience. And I had my own personal experience to let me know that we are soul first and soul works without the physical form of the body. And I don't expect anybody to believe it. But when we hear testimony and who we hear testimony from is what will matter. Then that's all we can do. And the day somebody has their own experience, they'll be able to reflect on the testimony of others. <clears throat> that's the best way I can explain that. I had an experience and this experience is how I knew well, how I know, I should say, because I didn't know it before then until the defining moment happened in my life. And I got a whole lot of defining moments, but this is one. I went to, well, I'm just going to say that I worked and I could think and I can sense who, that I was not in my body. And that's what this is going to be about. What happened to get me to the point to recognize that we are soul first and something wants that soul Something wants that soul and is anti-humane in its nature. And it wants to take it from mankind. And mankind is giving it up. Mankind is giving it up without recognizing that there is something that they're giving away. Because there's something out there trying to take it. And between these gurus pushing us to there is no... That everyone is a god, I should say. Making everything separate once again. Making everyone as an individual, not recognizing that there's a harmony and there's a balance, there's a give and take. That one projects, one receives. One projects, one receives. So that mislead in these gurus that are state, making everyone believe that they are the God as an individual. There is truth, like I said, but there is the lie. And the lie creates that separation. That we are one with means that we recognize that we're part of something greater. That there is no separation. And that everything is interconnected. And that what we do causes an effect everywhere. Everywhere. And if we make a mistake, we just go back and fix our mistake. And that's all we can do until we get better. And we get better. Like riding a bicycle. We will get better as we go. And the other part of this is this technology from another person I'm going to call out. And that's Elon Musk. Biggest walking contradiction there is. He can't make a sentence without it being a contradiction. Greg Braden had to listen to a lot of audio to catch him. Catch his contradiction. Catch what direction he's taking people in. The mislead. The Elon Musk, every paragraph, every two sentences, he says, I can catch contradiction. So he's afraid of AI, but he wants to connect our soul to it. And he won't call it a soul, he'll just call it your mind. But like I said, your mind is your soul. And once that soul is connected, there is no disconnecting. And the soul is eternal. And something's going to feed off of that for eternity. So it's very important to know that we are soul first. And not let anything take it and mislead us in the wrong direction. To be able to take the soul from the individual. So I had an experience back in, mm, I'm trying to come up, remember, come up with the year... It was around 2015-16. I can't be specific on a date. But I do remember that when I went to sleep, it was around 10 o'clock, and I went to bed before anybody else. I know because everybody was up. I saw my bed nice and made, lights off. I was like, I'm just going to go lay down for an hour, and I'm going to get back up with my family. But from Mexico, everybody stays up late. It's just what it is. 10 o'clock is early. So... I go and I see this nice cozy bed, lights are off, nobody's in the room, I'm just going to go lay down for a little bit. In that time that I laid down, 
I went into a very heavy sleep. I hear I couldn't hear nothing around me. And I say this only because I'm a very light sleeper. I hear everything around me and I still some might somehow get rest. But I hear everything around me. You can't walk by me without me knowing somebody's there while I'm asleep. But this one, I was out. And when I came to, I wasn't in my body. And I knew I was laying on the bed. And I knew that I just took a quick nap, but yet I couldn't see anything. And I knew I was awake. And so I can't see anything. I'm what would be like feeling because I couldn't even see my hands, but I was trying to feel where I was because I couldn't see anything. All I could do is hear. And what I heard was this immense, loud, like passing by train. Like, yeah. I know that was loud echoes here in my house, but it was like in my face loud. And you can even feel the vibration. You could you feel as if it were wind. You could feel the gush. And boom! I don't know where I'm at. So the train situation happened first. Then I recognized that I am somewhere, but I was just laying down and I know I'm on that bed and I know I went to take a nap and I know I can't see or feel anything. And so I'm even pressing my eyes wider, trying to what I felt was pressing my eyes wider so that I could try to see where I was, try to feel where I was and I couldn't feel anything with my hands is what I mean. I couldn't feel that I was standing on anything. I couldn't feel anything, but yet I knew I could feel wind. I could feel pressure and I knew that I was on that bed and I knew I just took a nap, but yet I didn't know where I was. And then all of a sudden again, that train goes and goes, yeah. but like a real train. The intensity, if you ever been by a train that goes by, the wind that moves and the sound as it's coming in and as it's going out. Amplify that by 10. That's, it was intense. So as I'm hearing this and I'm feeling the speed, I'm feeling speed. And when I get back to my body, which I didn't know I was out of my body. I didn't know I was out of my body until my head hit the pillow. When my, bed, when my head hit the pillow, it was, when I got up, I got up like, how you say that in English, is rebotar, reboté. I, bam! So I hit the pillow and popped back up. I jerked up out of bed. That's what I want to say. I'm trying to find out the words. In Spanish, is rebotar means you bounce. Or you, yeah, bounce. It's the best way. Jerk or bounce. So as I jerk up off the bed, I'm just like the first words I'm saying. And I didn't tell you the words I was saying while I was up there. And I'm not going to tell you the words I said that when I was hit the bed. Because a lot of you guys know I say a lot about words. But that's how I know I'm there. I was cursing up a storm when I was out of my body. I was cursing up a storm when I got back in my body. I was like, what the F? Over and over. Because I couldn't figure out what was going on. I couldn't figure out. What happened to me? What experience that was? And I checked the time. And the time was around 11 o'clock. So all this happened within an hour's time, but it felt like it was minutes. It felt like minutes, but an hour time had gone by. What that means, I don't know. I don't have no relevance to that, but I thought I would express that just in case somebody does know and can tell me something about that. But recognizing that my consciousness was physically out of my body, knowing my body was not where my conscious was, let me know from experience, not someone else's experience, from my own personal experience, that oh, we got something. We got something that works outside of the body and something wants it. I didn't come up with that saying then. I didn't realize that then. After this, all this nanotech, and all, many years later, this experience with this biotechnology in the body, how it's breaking down the body, how they're trying to link us up to this neural link, how all of these crazy pieces that are going on in our world right now with the reorganization of our economics, 
This is a very big plan, and this big plan is to corral mankind, get rid of the majority, corral what's left of mankind, but those majority that have gotten rid of are already part of that soul trap, and that's what I'm trying to express here. We must recognize that we are soul first, know where we stand with ourself, so that we can stand together as one with the Almighty, and have no fear in life nor in death. Because when our body passes away, we are in the same state of fear that we are in our physicality. So we better know where we stand in our physicality and start removing the fears that we have within. So that we don't take that fear when we're outside of our body. Whatever that may be. Be it that we have to face death. And in that death we have no fear. Because we can create a direction. As we create a direction here, we can create a direction when our body stops working. And I have another audio or another video I want to make about how to break that fear of death. How to remove the sense of ownership of all things. Because we are afraid to lose something. And to be, have that fear of loss makes it very difficult for one to live. Which is understanding, which is very understanding, absolutely logical, but there's something deep and internal within oneself that when we lose the deepest of our fears, that we can walk through our own fire and not get burned, meaning that nothing else can ever bring fear onto us, and we can walk steady because we face that internal fear within the self. That will be another episode because it's a whole long experience what happened to me to have to face the fear of death and the fear, the fear of loss. And when I came to that understanding, facing what that meant, what that meant after I faced it, what that did for me, to me, changed everything. So we're all here for a growth process to learn and grow from one another. And what I'm doing here is just sharing with you what I've done, what roads I've come across, and the choices I've had to make to be able to cross those roads to get to the place that I am today. And if I have nothing, if I have everything, I still remain the same person because what has grown is with inside of me and that can never be taken away, ever. And that's what I want to share with others on how to find that foundation within so that we have something to stand on in life and in death. With no fear in our journey in the direction that we got to now face. Because we have some very hard times that we have to face and confront. And the first thing we have to do is confront within. So this is the rise of a species, mankind. I want everyone to always remember that we were born through the fire only to be forged, to be ready for these times. Because these kids that we must stand here and defend on the front line, on all lines, on all fronts, they cannot go through what we have been through. They don't have the time to figure it out. But we can. And so if you've been forged through the fire, know that it was with, or that it serves, or that it can serve a purpose. Because I don't want to say that it was for a good reason. But whatever that reason may be that you've been forged through the fire to make you a motherfucking monster. But you can find peace within your heart to rock steady in balance, then you will be that monster on the fucking front line to defend, defend your home, defend your neighborhood, defend your town, your city. We were not born to be broken from nothing. So let's pick up the pieces and let's rise up because we are a species. We are mankind. 
and we will rise.